Is the House of Dragon television show on the same path that Game of Thrones followed? From a very enjoyable, watchable show, ending up as a complete, utter disaster that was pretty much universally panned. It didn't finish up with numerous people loving it and numerous people disliking it, debating, this is why it's very good, this is why it's very bad. No, 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 no. The only debate was how to describe how utterly bad it was. It's bottom of the barrel. No, it's a dumpster fire. It's a train wreck. You're all wrong. It's a big pile of steaming, stinking dog crap. Well, <laughs> you convinced me. You convinced me too. You're right. You nailed it. My review of season two can be summed up in one word, disappointing. Disappointing. Many of the reviews I watched and read use that identical word. Is the House of Dragon on the same path that Game of Thrones followed? I don't want it. I don't want it either, but look how your show ended up. I told you I don't want it. That's what happened with your show. Now, I'm not claiming it's definitively headed that way, but I'm very concerned that it is. When this season ended, I was like, what? That's the ending? It sort of ended abruptly, and I didn't feel satisfied. Like, I watched a season of something. There didn't seem like there was a progression in character development or story arc or anything of that nature. It seemed like a lot of the characters were spinning their wheels, not really doing anything many episodes. I heard that the HBO execs or somebody decided to cut it from 10 to 8 episodes, and I don't know that that ha had an effect on it. I suppose it had a little effect, but even within the eight episodes, they seemed to be padded filler, just taking up time. Like I said, characters spinning their wheels, not doing anything, not behaving like I thought they would be. One in particular, Damon, with his dreams, hallucinations, visions, whatever you want to call them, just wasted a lot of time. There were too many of them, and they were too long as they were going on. I'm sort of prejudiced against that dreams and visions, hallucinations kinds of thing to begin with. It's too easy to do weird for weird's sake. Think of Lost, the same principle. Uh, the, the makers ended up admitting after it was over, they just did that. Let's do the weirdest stuff we can think of. They didn't have it thought out about what the meaning of it or plotted out. It's just put a bunch of stuff together. It's like an, a Rorschach inkblot. People read into it things that weren't intentionally put in there. You pour the ink out on paper and people see something. For instance, here's a plot. What do you see? Well, there's a wolf. That must be some foreshadowing. Something's going to happen with the Starks. Show it to somebody else. That looks like a lion to me. I guess the Lannisters, something coming up with them. And nothing happens with either. And then something happens with the Targaryen. Oh, you know what? That was actually a dragon. Wow, it was there the whole time. <laughs> no, you're just reading something into it that wasn't put there intentionally. I'm not saying that's what they're doing with all their visions, but it's too easy to do that. And then you throw in some member berries. There's a, a body double for Amelia Clark. Oh, wow, Daenerys with her three little dragons. Wow, what are you showing me that for? It's reminding me how... Bad, the other show ended up. It's foreshadowing. Yeah, but I think it's not foreshadowing what's going to happen in the show. It's what's about to show. The, the show itself is headed for disaster. I think that's what it's foreshadowing. You're reminding me of the garbage <laughs> that happened before. Now, Game of Thrones' first season started out outstanding, excellent. And it stayed that way for... The first four seasons. I bought the Blu-rays. Here's season one. All the way through to season six. Now, season five, I started seeing problems. Things I didn't like. House of Dragon is season two, and it has a noticeable drop in quality. And it started out at a lower spot than Game of Thrones. Because the first season, I would say, is good to very good. So it's closer to the bottom, and it's headed that way already in the second season. Recently, George R.R. R. Martin's been in the news expressing concerns about changes they've made in the show and how he thinks it'll affect the story negatively. 
That's very concerning too. The author of the story is saying this is going to have a bad effect. Not good. I don't understand these people that buy this stuff and then they want to significantly change the story. Example is Rings of Power. You've spent $250 million just for the rights of some token stuff and then say, I'm going to write the story token didn't tell. Well, why you spend $250 million? Tolkien didn't have the rights to dwarves, elves, uh, sorcerers. Just make your own universe, name them different names, and you can tell whatever story you want. You save yourself $250 million. You can put it into the, making the, the TV show. As an aside, it's sort of ironic or funny. George R.R. R. Martin, a while back, was sort of criticizing the fans, say Star Trek and, and the Lord of the Rings. It's like, geez, fans should be fans. Why are they, why are they expressing displeasure? They're, what kind of fans are those? It's like now they're changing his story, and then he's like, hey... That's going to ruin the story. And, uh, George, th that's what they were complaining about. Now do you understand? <laughs> you change the canon and the characters, then it's not the same thing that the people loved. It's very easy to understand when they were complaining. It takes <laughs> changes to his stuff for him that's already dawned on him. Hey, it's going to destroy my project. My legacy will go down the hill of my stories. I don't know how easy when you're selling something, I've heard people do it, is to put some kind of final script approval. It probably a lot of people wouldn't want to buy something if that was in there. And plus it'd be more work for George to do, to read the scripts and, <laughs> and work. Uh, no, you don't want to do that. If you really love it, insist that you have final script approval. Probably wouldn't be sold. They probably want to put out a lot of money and have him sitting. Oh, George, would you read the damn thing? Well, I'm busy with a lot of other things. I'm like three quarters of the way reading the script. We got to get it filmed. Would you damn stop doing your other stuff and read the damn script? We're trying to make it. That's what would happen. That's probably why nobody would pay for it. <laughs> He's always three quarters done stuff. I don't know why HBO doesn't realize that this show tanks. They've got all these other shows in the works. How many people are just drop out and say, I'm through with it. I'm not going to watch it anymore. I wasn't going to watch House of the Dragon because I was so disgusted the way Game of Thrones finished. And my nephew, he came late to Game of Thrones. He was in college and then he was, uh, he knew about the show show Game of Thrones but he he never watched it and I had been buying the Blu-rays like I said and then he wanted to watch it so I would bring it down and watch it with him and that's kind of fun too that if you know what's going to happen and you're watching with somebody who has no idea if something like Ned Stark or the Red Wedding comes up it's it's fun to see the people's reaction when they're surprised and shocked and stuff but in any event he grew to love the show but he was so disgusted by the ending that he refuses to watch The House of Dragon. And he said, I'm going to wait till it's all over. And if it's outstanding reviews and stuff, maybe I'll watch it. If House of a Dragon turns out to be garbage, he's going to be taking my title as the genius. I won't be the genius anymore. He can take the title because he was smarter than me. <laughs> the way. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> so if this one finishes no way I'm going to watch anymore I don't care I'm going to follow the same thing he said if they come out with some other shows Duncan Egg or whatever the heck they're working on I'm going to wait until they're all over and that can be a long wait because I heard that the season 3 is not coming out to 2026 so people start getting disgusted and you're taking this long for each season if the next season's like that people will say I'm not going to wait a couple of years for garbage I'm going to watch some other shows. And by then, there'll be other shows in the work. Maybe there'll be some other hot properties and say, well, I'm not wasting time on that anymore. And that's what happened with me with Walking Dead stuff. They had a lot of spinoffs. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch Daryl in France. What the hell is he doing over in France? How in the hell did he get over there? Like, I'm not watching that. This is my dragon. For Game of Thrones, I called it Drogon. I'll have to rename it for House of Dragons. Let me know what you think. You think there's indications the show's headed for problems or did you like the season?